Finally tonight, as promised, our number one story, and the jig is up. I work in, MSNBC comes to you from NBC and GE are headquartered at a communist, fascist, progressive building. An evil, mind-controlling, symbol-ridden, living, breathing, evil building. I know this is true because Glenn Beck has told me so. America, I want to talk to you a little bit about propaganda that you see maybe every day, at least people here in New York, and they have no idea what they're even looking at. Rockefeller had uh, Standard Oil. That's how he made all of his money. Well, Standard Oil had this big uh, Gothic building downtown in New York, and they wanted to change it and update it. And there was no real American architecture in New York City, in, in the whole world. They decided to do something completely different, streamline, different. Except, Sparky, Rockefeller Center was not built as an update of Rockefeller's Standard Oil building. There's never been a Standard Oil office in Rockefeller Center. The Rockefellers didn't even want to call it Rockefeller Center. But do go on. The psychiatrists in the audience are all saying, this is fascinating. Let me grab a prescription pad. This is Rockefeller Plaza. Here's the door frame of this building. This is where the concerts are. There's this man and this man. Well, let's see. He's holding a hammer and there's weed over there. There's weed over there? I've been coming here for 30 years. I never knew there was weed over here. He's holding a hammer and there's weed over there. So this must be the worker. Can you show me this guy, please? This must be the worker. Yes, because he has the hammer here, the worker. Maybe he's MC Hammer. Or maybe it's an old ad for Arm & Hammer baking soda. I'll just show you the front of the building 636 Fifth Avenue. This, I walked by this the other day with my wife, and this, I stopped there and I showed her all of this stuff, and it, drive, it drives me nuts that nobody knows what this is. You know what that is at 636 Fifth Avenue? That's the clothing store Fasanab. That's what that is. So these are French communists. We rejoined Glenn Beck already in progress. Now let's show you his hand. This man's strong hand is holding on to the reins tightly here, holding back the engines of industry being led into the bright future of tomorrow by a young boy. Who is this? Who is this? Is it Mickey Mantle? This is the strong leader taking that, using that industry and those machines to lead us into the bright, to a bright future led by our children. Gee, who's having indoctrination next week? Oh yeah, that's right, the president, completely unrelated. This represents, at the time this was made, Mussolini. This was Mussolini. Well, so it's, uh, it's Mussolini and it's Obama, and it was carved into the side of this communist building that I work in 30 years before Obama was even born, huh? This is actually sitting on my desk. I keep this on my desk to remind myself that very beautiful things can come from really ugly places. There it is, made in the USSR. What is this? This is actually a, an image that was made of this. This man beating the, plow, uh, the, beating the sword into a plowshare. That sits here in New York City. It was a, it was a gift from the former Soviet Union. It sits behind this building. The United Nations, which happens to sit on land, donated to the United States and the world by Rockefeller. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. Glenn's about to tell us that the map to the secret treasure is on the back of the Declaration of Independence. But wait, 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 wait. What was that about the prototype on your desk? I keep this on my desk to remind myself that very beautiful things can come from really ugly places. You show the other side. There it is, made in the USSR. A prototype made in the Soviet Union is sitting on Glenn Beck's desk. Glenn Beck has a communist paperweight when it's probably still broadcasting instructions direct from Joe Stalin into his head. Glenn Beck is a Soviet agent. All of the images that I've shown you here Thousands of people walk by every single day. Jack, our sound engineer, how long do you work in that building, Jack? I've been in this area for 29 years. 29 years he's been walking by that stuff. He said, i never even seen it. I've never noticed it. Of course not, until somebody po pa points it out. Just like now that it's all been pointed out to Jack, every time he walks by Glenn Beck, you'll think, dude's crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to show you the things that seem to be hidden, but they're not. They are out in plain sight. 
those with eyes will not see and those with ears will not hear. You're awake. You need to see the things that are hidden in plain sight. Progressives, fascists, communists. But they're not. But you know, perhaps Glenn is right about all this. I mean, let's look for these symbols he talks about hidden in plain sight representing those progressive, fascist, communists. And not just at 636 Fifth Avenue, where inside what only looks like a Fasanab store, even now French communists are selling high-end cocktail dresses to Mussolini, MC Hammer, and Nelson Rockefeller. No, no. Let's go block to the west, to the left left, if you will, to 1211 Sixth Avenue and the strange hidden symbols on the walls of a building which thousands of ordinary Americans pass by every day. Yes, there it is. The home of such companies as News Corp and IIJ America, Internet Initiative Japan, Emperor Hirohito, and West LD, West Deutsche Landesbank, mein Herr. And look at this symbol. This, this is the ancient Sanskrit symbol for being left back a year in school. And this symbol over here, why on the right it's a hieroglyph dating back to the fourth century BC, meaning man functioning despite absence of brain. But what's that on the left? That's, that's Alan Combs. There's no more Alan Combs. Why is there still a symbol for Alan Combs, comrade? And this, this, this is a pictograph from ancient Crete, an ancient Cretan pictograph, and it translates into English as, bleep it, we'll do it live. <laughs> but nowhere, nowhere among these symbols that are outside the walls of the actual studios of Fox News, nowhere is there a symbol representing Glenn Beck. Are they not proud of the Glenn Beck? Will they not acknowledge the truth of the Glenn Beck? Or is the symbol for the Glenn Beck just not yet back from Photomat? You know what else is at 1211 6th Avenue on the roof? NBC Earth Stations. NBC Earth Stations. I work at NBC, and that term NBC Earth Stations, that even scares the crap out of me. NBC and Glenn Beck in the same building, two marionettes, one set of strings, one puppeteer, and, 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 and about the symbolism of the address, 1211 6th Avenue. 6th Avenue is actually called Avenue of the Americas. Yes, plural, Americas. Not just the America, but all those little irrelevant Americas where the illegal aliens come from. Renamed Avenue of the Americas by the One Worlders after the Second World War, the philosophers, the internationalists. An address still used to this day at this very hour on the stationery of this man, Rupert Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch of the Avenue of the Americas, Rupert Murdoch, hasta la vista, baby. And finally, the ultimate awful secret about 1211, sick, sorry, 1211 Avenue of the Americas, a truth so shocking, so horrifying, you must send your children out of the room immediately. I said immediately. Look at the website for 1211 Avenue of the Americas and behold the horror. In New York City, it's all about location. And in Midtown Manhattan, 1211 Avenue of the Americas is the premier spot. Located at the center of Midtown Manhattan, this prestigious Class A office tower is part of Rockefeller Center. That's right, Fox News is in Rockefeller Center. Glenn Beck works in Rockefeller Center. Glenn Beck's office building was designed by Wallace K. Harrison. And who was Wallace K. Harrison? The personal architect to the Rockefellers. Oh my gosh. The architect who designed the United Nations. Don't let any of these people ever tell you anything other than the truth. And that is early 20th century progressives and the progressives of today. It makes sense. No sandwagging, bushwhacking, horn swoggling, crocker crocker. He's gonna roll away, Mr. Cutter. Now, who can argue with that? Yeah. Robert. It all fits together. The map to the treasure chest is on the back of Obama's birth certificate, which is in the FEMA detention camp that's hidden inside Glenn Beck's brain and which is kept in a mayonnaise jar on the porch next to the NBC Earth Station at 1211 Avenue of the Americas. Don't get on that ship, Mr. Beck, to serve man. It's a cookbook. And now to expand on all this, ladies and gentlemen, here is Rachel Maddow. Good evening, Rachel. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you know, those with ears 
will not hear. No, no, no. Those that have ears will not see. Uh, <laughs> you know, that makes it all make sense. It's all falling Suddenly, into yes. place now. Yes. Spectacular. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Keith, both from the country <laughs> and from me. <laughs> all right. And thank you at home for staying with us for the next hour, even though we're broadcasting from Rockefeller Center.